What I'm going to show you here today is a basic way of doing a chair seat. It's about the simplest thing you're going to do with, with upholstery. Um, first of all, of course, is to remove your seat from, uh, from your chair. This is something that most everybody has in their toolbox. It's called a scratch-all. This suffice, this, will be, this is great for taking staples out. It's just a matter of getting it. Now make sure your hand is not in front for obvious reasons. And put your staple remover or your scratch all underneath and press down and just force the staple up. So you notice it's just up over the top of the dust cover. So you take your side cutter, standard for any toolbox, and just pull your staple out. And you continue on doing that and removing all of this. You remove all the staples here from your welt and so on into your chair. Once, uh, once this is removed, then you will have this, which is your basic seat. And a lot of times the foam itself will have to be replaced. And that is just a matter of going to your local foam supplier. And I suggest that you always buy high density foam. So uh, then you're going to cut your uh, piece out on the foam. Now, this can be a little difficult and I'll show you a sheet of foam here so what you're going to basically do is you're going to take your seat and remove this foam and then you're going to lay this down on your foam and you just mark out the shape of your foam leaving at least a quarter of an inch all the way around this this whole piece so you're going to mark it a quarter of an inch wider than what you have here so then you're going to take it and cut it. What works well is a carving knife. The reciprocating blades carving knife works well. And you just take that and you cut it out to the shape. If you don't have that, use a ruler, press down on the foam, and use a utility knife. Down to your wood, your foam, and then your polyester batting. Now you can use quilt batting. It's, it's available in most every place. You can also use that. So. I would also suggest that you spray a little bit of uh, adhesive. You can buy that as well, just a, a fabric adhesive on here. That helps to hold it in place when you're upholstering. So you're going to take your cloth tape or your tailor's tape. And then you take your chair, give it one inch past for stapling. Bring it around and also an inch down here. So we're looking at 20 inches. For this piece of fabric. I'm going to measure 20 inches that way. Same thing goes over for here. One inch all the way around and you're at 23 inches. Okay so then you're going to take this and measure it out making sure that your pattern repeat is in the center of your chair. This is very important especially if you're doing anything with a, a, a bold pattern. Anything that has a floral. Uh, in this case a stripe the pattern report repeat is not really that great. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to cut it, mark out my piece, and I have that done. So I've marked out my piece of fabric. Um, see the measurements I just had there. Okay, so another important step is making sure you get the center of your fabric, being at the center of your pattern repeat. So I'm using, in this case, I'm using this this piece right here which is right here because this is the pattern I want up through the center of my chair and I want that on every chair I do. Make a little snip and that's my center mark. So I take an ordinary square and follow the chair down till you get it. The fastest way to do it is just follow the chair down till you get it at, a, at an even number. Not in a half marker so it's 15 and I'm going to cut it, I'm going to center it at seven and a half. So I have a cent, then I'm going to make a mark here, take my square, square it off on the edge, and just draw a line right down through the center. So that's my center mark on my chair. Very important. Centering is very important. So then we're going to take, you can see here the center mark that goes up through. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lay my piece of fabric down and I'm going to lay this on top of here roughly around the center, eyeball it to the center. 
center this way, center that way, it gives me room to work with it. Okay, so then I bring my center, actually I'll do this in. So I'm gonna, you can see the center mark here, and there's the center line. Actually, I'll put a little mark there so you can see. So there's your center line. Okay, so I bring this center to the center of that cut, bring it up, put it here, and use the stapler. Now, you can use a hand stapler. Best thing to use is here. The next best thing is an electric stapler. So you can see here it's lined up on the center. So I'll put a staple here. All right. So then I'm going to do the same here, making sure I'm centered. Just a slight little push down. And then I'll put a mark, put a staple here. Now for people who are not used to doing this stuff, there's a quick little way you can do this that uh, uh, makes it easier to make sure that you don't get pull marks and, and uneven marks in the in this in the uh, fabric here. So what I'm going to do is I have this staple. I'm going to make a mark right here, and I'm going to measure that. So that gives me two inches. So what I'll do is I'll go up here, measure down two inches, put a mark there, two inches from here, put a mark there. And then I'm going to join these two with a line, and there we go. So now what I have, as you can see, I have a line going across here. The reason being is if you push this down, you can see that that comes right on that line. And the reason I do that is because I can pull my fabric down, using my hand, pull it down to that line, put a staple in there, Continue on across like that, and I have a perfectly straight line all the way across. So you don't have, you know, you don't have uneven pull marks, and you know it looks terrible when it's like that. Do the same thing on this end, and all the way across here, uh, these sides. You just bring down. Now you won't be putting a line on the sides. Uh, you just kind of got to judge that. But I usually put a staple here and a staple there. And the reason I do that is if everything is centered up this way and this way, then you see I don't have any if I don't have any distorted lines like this here. If I was was to do that without doing each side, chances are I'm going to end up with this, and that looks terrible. You have distorted lines, especially working with stripes. Plain fabric is not much to worry about, but still, regardless of what fabric you use, you should always do this here. Center, center. Line across, same thing down here, and you can't go wrong. Uh, corners, I'm going to keep that even there. Staple. It's a little harder to do with a hand stapler. I wouldn't suggest using a hand stapler, though people use them. And I'm going to bring this over here. And this is, I'm just going to basically do the corner here. I won't do any of this here for now. I'll just give you some idea on how to do the corner. So what you're going to do is pull your fabric in here, staple there, bring this down tight here, staple, we good, there. Now you can see I have kind of a corner made here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shears and cut out so far, probably about an inch back from, from the main corner here, from here to here. Then, take a, make a cut from here to here. And I'm just going to, what I'm doing is just basically cutting out the bulk of the fabric that's, so I don't end up with a big bunch here that makes your chair look all out of kilter when you attach it. So you can see it's piece cut out, cut down. Then you just take that piece, fold it over. And staple here and here, and voila, you have a corner. So this is basically the finished chair. As you can see, there's no pull marks. Right? Like I told you, make sure you have your centering here. So um, I have this done now. On this, in this particular case, I have what's called a piping or a welt. Uh, most people out there don't have access to uh, to the machine to do this stuff. But if you check with your local upholster, he might oblige you and make some piping for you. 
Uh, this, uh, what I've done here is I have uh, put a dust cover over it. This is neat because it covers over all the excess fabric and you don't get the pieces that hang down. So you put a bit of dust and dust cover. All you have to do is go to your local uh, Canadian Tire or, or uh, Walmart and pick up uh, the landscaping material. Landscaping material makes great dust cover. Cut it out this shape, staple it on the same as you would staple your fabric. And that's about it. And that's your chairs done. And you're going to be all happy about it. There you go.